The motives of the First Crusaders have long intrigued historians. Why on earth would a group tens of thousands of people strong set out from their homelands, march thousands of miles into the unknown and take on a formidable enemy? I think when we look at this, it would be perhaps naive to think that only one thing drove such a great range of people. I think we should always look at a number of reasons. And you might say we could be naive 900 years later trying to work out exactly what drove people uh, all that time ago. But as historians, it's our job to, to try and make some educated guesses. We've got a clue in Pope Urban II's canon from the Council of Clermont, more of a sort of dry legal document than the narratives that we often employ. And this canon says, whoever for devotion alone, not for honour or money, goes to Jerusalem to liberate the holy places, can for this journey receive remission of all penance. And that statement is something that we can pick apart. And I think it starts by expressing a religious motive. And in the intense religiosity of the medieval time, I think it is probably fair to say that religion was a driving factor shared by all the First Crusaders to a greater or lesser degree. Urban is offering them the chance to recover Christ's city, the most important places to Christians, from the hands of the Muslims, who he depicts in very barbaric, aggressive, negative terms as part of the propaganda to, to fire people up to take this journey. Going on crusade would allow people to go on pilgrimage to the Holy Land, to fulfill their spiritual needs in the place where Christ and his disciples lived and walked. It would also get them the spiritual reward that Urban had promised, effectively the remission of all their sins, the consequences of their sinful, greedy, violent lives. But it's interesting that Urban said you should not go for honour or money, which immediately makes you think people must be going for honour and money. It is going to drive people, particularly the noble classes. The age of chivalry isn't quite upon us yet, but nobles will want to be seen to be the great man, the first man over the walls, the hero in battle. And that is definitely part of the agenda for these people. Going for money. Well, you're going to need a lot of money to keep the crusade going. It's a very expensive, ongoing expense, if you see what I mean. As far as coming back rich, I suppose that um, some people aspired to do that. And when you're about to break into a town or a city, looking to recover some of the spoils of war is certainly going to drive people. I don't think many people came home rich from the crusade in the end, but that's not to say they didn't hope to do so when they set out. Another motive that's often ascribed to crusaders is, is a wish for land. And for a small number of them, you can say that's the case because a number of them stay in the Holy Land and settle. But for most people, it's not because they came home. Most crusaders, when they've completed the conquest of Jerusalem, leave and come back to their families in Europe. So you have a variety of reasons expressed there. And one more perhaps would be patronage. If I'm a lord, I say I'm going on crusade, my servants and retainers have no choice. They simply have to come with me. So I'm not sure whether that's a voluntary exercise or not, but they're there. There's one further group that I'd like to throw into the mix who tend to be ignored, and that's the Italian city-states, Pisa, Genoa, and Venice. And as far as the Italians and the Crusade go, they tend to have a bad reputation. They're linked with the capture of Constantinople in 1204, the Venetians are, but that's a different story. At the time of the First Crusade, the Crusades preached in Genoa, for example. The place is full of churches. The people are deeply religious and they would like to see Jerusalem back in Christian hands. But they're traders too. And they are already trading with Egypt, with places like Jaffa. They would like a stake, a better stake in the Near East trade. So that's one of the other reasons that they go. They're also emerging a sense of civic pride. We have a writer called Caffaro who's interesting uh, Caffaro of Genoa, because he's a layman, and most accounts of crusades are written by churchmen. But this man from Genoa is proud of his city. He said, we did it, we did it for civic pride, for Genoa, for gold, and for God. And he is comfortable in lining all three of those things up. So I suppose my conclusion is that uh, there's no simple answer to this. We need to try and consider a range of motives, look at who's taking part, and how the crusade affects them once they've completed it.